Hi everyone, so we're doing a little round table today on cellular regeneration. So I'm your host, Antonia Harmon. We have Lisa from Question the Narrative. So we've been doing some cellular regeneration with her. We've got Honey C. Golden and we've got Abby Wynn. So uh, these are my lovely friends and healers. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna talk about what I've been doing, what's going on with them. Um, Abby has now been regenerated at, like a few days ago. Um, Lisa's got continued um progression with her finger and honey's stepping in to just sort of give us her <laughs> her opinion on everything as well so let's um let me give you a brief so for anyone who is unaware of what this all is i have discovered some a new cutting edge healing technique which i think is basically us being the med bed which um, and med beds are something which have been medical beds, which have been spoken about in the truth of community for a little while. And it's basically there's an energetic machine that we sit inside or lay inside and it will regenerate our bodies. Now, um, hopefully this technology exists. <laughs> it's hard to know whether it actually is uh, because, it, yeah, honey's got a yes on it, it does actually exist. <laughs> um, but I think with a lot of energetic technology, it is a mimic of what we can actually do ourselves, like telepathy, like Zoom is telepathy. So I think there are some, um, some, some technological stuff that actually we can do ourselves. And I've discovered with the help of Lisa, because Lisa had a fight with a blender, how to regenerate um, flesh and reverse age and all sorts of craziness. So just in brief, Lisa had a fight with a blender, her finger went necrotic, which is when it goes black, it's cell death and it's not pretty. That, that would mean that there's gonna be sort of skin grafts or in olden days, it would have been amputation. So it was in a mess. And then I um, we were talking to one another and I discovered a new technique because of out of necessity, you know, invention comes out of necessity largely. And I managed to regenerate Lisa's finger within a week. Um, it went from black to flesh colored and it's been, how long has it been now, Lisa? A couple of months? Yeah, a couple of months now. Started, I had this February the 8th is when the accident happened and um, I didn't take the bandage off because I would, would never look at it. I knew in my mind that if I couldn't continue to visualize it being healthy, it would, wouldn't be good. But when the bandage is off and the, the doctors would look at it, they'd all go like, oh, okay, that's necrotic. And we were like, uh, uh, you know, and they're like, just calm down, just calm down. And that's when you said, that's when we started talking about it. And then it started coming back when I took the bandage off. Yeah. Access to air. Yeah. So what's been happening recently? So we haven't spoken for a few weeks about your finger yeah. on Zoom. So how is it going now? What's what's the updates on it so far? It's absolutely extraordinary. As I said to you um, before, every single morning when I wake up, it's like there's a movement because it's the section of the finger that was completely almost taken off. A little bit more of it is healed. The flesh underneath it has been growing back because not the, the, the skin had grown back over it after the bandages came off, but underneath it, there was, there was muscle mass or, or the cells were missing because it had just covered up a wound, but it didn't have the underlying flesh that you normally have. So it's just this process where it's, you can feel it. I feel it every day. It's actually, I feel the tingling of cells coming together. It's absolutely extraordinary. It really is extraordinary because I feel it. Now there's a numbness here. When I touch it, I put pressure on it, but it doesn't hurt anymore. And it's enough of it that the numbness means that there's a lot more underneath it. And I don't feel like that hole underneath the finger. So it's, it's really continuously creating cells. That's where it is. <laughs> and when people look at my finger, I don't know if you can see that, they can't really see a difference because there's no difference in coloration. There's a slight bump on the top there, but my nail's long enough, they can't notice the difference. So there's no physical damage of it, which is fascinating on that. Yeah, I feel, I feel it. I feel it. <laughs> I shouldn't, can't get arrested because I can't get fingerprints done because there's no fingerprint left on that at this point because it's still regenerating. But you can't tell that I had this happen. 
That's pretty cool. Yeah. And there's no pain involved in it, but I do feel something in there all the time. Like there's a, a numbness, but every day that area that's hardened and was numb is smaller and smaller and smaller. And I know it's going to take like a couple more months to, to completely redo, but it's coming back into a healthy finger. Wow. Yeah. Thank you, Antonio. <laughs> I'm glad to be your guinea pig. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to try not to have those interactions with any blenders again, so we don't have to try a new one. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's, it's really, but it was so interesting because as as you were we were talking about it, it's like there was a, there was like immediate feeling of transition on the finger. Really interesting. So, yeah, well, and that's just, that's an accident. So let's you know you were then you started expanding this concept broader out. So. It was a necessity more than an accident. It was like, oh, yeah, oh dear, yeah. Lisa's, Lisa's finger is not in a good way. I don't know. But the word necrotic just frightened the life yeah. out much more yeah. than it did you. <laughs> it was not well, not doing that. Honestly, it, it, I, I, I was, but you never was like, why aren't you upset? I'm like, well, if I am upset, I will create it worse. So I knew enough about that. That was like an instinct. But I knew that if I looked at it and saw it that way, that visualization would never get out of my head. And I would then be creating more and more of the thing I didn't want. Mm -hmm. So was focusing very much on this is the outcome. This is the outcome. And of course I go to the doctor like this, like, Oh, you that bandage. I'm like this and talking to someone else. I literally did not look at it. And, and it was interesting because you're right. I wasn't as worried about the necrotic because I was avoiding it and you helped me. I think the combination of visualizing it and your cellular regeneration was a really good combination. Honey, what do you think? Cause you're, 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 is that a good combination? That's a really good point because you can try and heal someone and give them all this power and work on their body. And if they're just like, no, 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 no. And they're stopping it, then it can stop it. Sometimes you'll still get through, yeah. but a lot of times they're stopping in and usually it's with emotional healing. I've noticed it, but yeah. So you helping it along is really important. And it tells you how two powerful people working together can really create something amazing, Yeah, you know, cause it's your body and you're telling your body, yes, you're healing. Mm. Yeah. And then Tony is giving it the seed of healing, you know, and the frequency and you're yeah. allowing it to come in. Yeah. And I know, Antonio, as you were going through that, you were working um, on higher, higher cellular voltage. Mm. It was a period of time where, you know, you were, you were playing around with that and doing that. I literally couldn't sleep. I was so energized. I could not sleep more than a few hours a night. Yeah, it's shifting. So I've got you and I were in the first stages, so we kept on pushing through. And um, yeah. Abby's just come on as yeah, a Abby, how do you feel? participant, and a few <laughs> other people are coming in as later participants. <laughs> now, when you can't sleep, don't blame good energy <laughs> and pretty good spring oh. cleaning. All of a sudden, it was like, right, I can do a gazillion jobs. I've been putting off. What happened to you, Abby? <laughs> well, not many people know, but I've been in chronic pain all my life, and we were joking about this, Antonia. Because if, um, if I hadn't been an energy healer, I probably would just be in bed and not do anything at all for my whole life. And um, so you suggested to try this on me. And um, it was upsetting to have no pain for a day because then I just realized how much pain I've had for how long I've had it. You know, so I'm going through an emotional process at the moment where I'm getting used to the idea of not being in pain. I'm 50, 52. And I was trying to track back, well, when did it start? And it started well before my 20s. It really did. And it just came on gradually. So as Lisa was saying there, not wanting to create what the doctors were, were seeing, I didn't want to create anything around a diagnosis or a label. So I've never got diagnosed. I didn't realize it was so bad. I have good days. I have bad days. I'm incredibly sensitive to energy. And what I've learned over the years is the only thing really that my body responds to is energy work. And if the energy work can create a space, then the body will catch up with itself and clear and heal what's going on. And so, Antonia, your frequency is just unbelievable. Whatever you blasted me with cleared away whatever was irritating me. 
um, getting in and hurting me, but my body went into shock then. It's like, oh my God, what's going on? So <laughs> it was like, because you're you're just so amazing. It's like, we want to do it all, let's do it all now. And my body's like, whoa, hang on a minute. Like, what's going on? Wow. So like Lisa was saying, she didn't sleep on Tuesday. And you know, I don't even know what bloody week it was, whatever day it was, I woke up. <laughs> It was this week. It was a few days ago. I woke up. Yeah, it was a couple of days. I woke up at seven in the morning and I moved in the bed as I do and nothing hurt. Yes, and two I had days this little ago voice. Today. Today's Thursday. Two, it was days, two days ago. ago. Yeah. Hmm. So then I had this little voice said, you know, you could go for a walk today. And I'm like, oh my God, I could actually go for a walk because I haven't been going for a walk for months because of all of the solar energy coming in and all of the light codes and everything. I've just been a mess. So I got up out of bed and my hips didn't hurt and I got on my work, walking stuff and I walked and then I came home and I did this and I did that. I went to the garden center, did some work, saw my mother. Did I was still going at half 11 at night and I was going around the kitchen dancing and I had no pain and I go, thank you, Antonia. And then I woke up the next day and I was heavy and I had pain, but it was nothing like the pain that I would have had. So I'm thinking, you know, you'd go up in steps and, and, and um, because I've had four children, right? And if you try and take a baby and put it on a developmental chart, they never grow in a straight line. There's always going backwards, going forwards, shooting up overnight. So I think being patient with my body, but the fact that I had that day, that it's possible to have a day pain-free has lifted my spirit so much. Now, I, as you guys all know, I achieve a lot while I'm in pain. So I'm just thinking, what could I do when I'm not in pain? That's incredible. So, you know, and, and we were talking yesterday, Antonio, because we were saying, okay, why did it come back the next day? Mm -hmm. And you had mentioned, which I thought was really interesting, like a column that you're filling a column with light and that maybe there were leaks and cracks in the column and that we need to seal it up. So every time I go into that visualization and I patch myself up, it feels like it takes better. So it's possible that, the integrity of whatever structure in my energy field that we're working on needs to also be healed too. So it's a co-creation. I think, you know, I'm doing bits, you're doing bits and talking to my body because this week also very interestingly, there's somebody that I know who doesn't believe in God, doesn't believe in energy healing, doesn't want it. Very, very sick. So sick. She's desperate. Okay. I'll get the healing. So I've been sending her healing and she hasn't been letting it in at all. And so she's only gradually beginning to let it in. So you can see it really is like Connie says, you have to receive what's being given and the frequencies that you're giving Antonio are so strong. I think it takes a strong person like you know, myself and Lisa to be able to receive and absorb and make the most of it. So it's all a work in progress and it's really, really exciting. It's like mm -hmm. really exciting as to what this is going on. So, so I did just say thank you, Antonio, for giving me the opportunity to be your guinea pig too. Because <laughs> Well, you know, we are beta testing, stunning. we are doing guinea pigs. And, and interestingly, the people I've got my beta testing group are all having good results as well. Mm -hmm. You know, like there was somebody who's got um, leukemia and immediately after the session, the, the, the um, color came back to his cheeks and he's got more bandwidth. So the, I'm, the bandwidth is something which I've coined. I don't know if it's in every, everyone knows the phrase, but basically it means more, more ability to accomplish more tasks. It's like <laughs> you, when we get busy and overloaded and overwhelmed, we narrow our focus and we can do less things in a day. So um, now we've got a wider focus and you have energy to get to doing jobs that you possibly have avoided. For mm -hmm. me, it's like some of the spring cleaning and like unpacking some boxes. And I started, I was, like, right, that tea cupboard's a mess. And I ended up moving everything from my tea cupboard into a particular drawer so that now my tea is much more accessible. Like those sorts of jobs, which you just think, oh, and you never get around to. That's what bandwidth is for me. And every single person I'm working with has had increased bandwidth. It's almost like you've got the life force or the energy that you had in, say, your 20s, where mm -hmm. it wasn't a bother to be able to go and do a, lots of jobs or um, you, you could easily have social arrangements and see someone at breakfast, someone at lunch, someone in the evening and be absolutely fine doing all these things. Whereas now I, I ne wouldn't necessarily meet a lot of different people in a day because it would just be exhausting. Now mm -hmm. I'm you getting- You know, it's interesting, going to interrupt you on that one, Antonio, mm -hmm. because even though my pain had come back slightly yesterday, I still went to go and see my mother. I went and brought things. I was carrying stuff around that I wouldn't normally carry. I came home. And my brain is expecting me to be shattered and exhausted and just want to have a rest. And I know I could actually do something. So I go out in the garden and I start planting flowers. And, you know, it's, it's, it's exactly what you're saying. 
Yeah. Yeah. But what's interesting what you're saying there. <laughs> yeah, Abby, what's interesting what you're saying is that your body has to catch up because your expectation of what you were going to experience and feel. I think that's exactly what I did with my finger. I was going through that and expected each time I touched, I would do something. And now I don't. You're right. It's really training yourself to have a different experience with the same stimuli. I think that's a really important, important concept Mm -hmm. of what you're saying, because we continue to expect an experience that way, which is very interesting. Well, you know, when I'm in pain for so long, I notice when I'm going up the stairs, even in the house, I'm bracing myself for the pain when I bend my knee and go up the stairs and even just walking up the stairs. I'm like, oh, it doesn't hurt so much now. You know, I got a sharp pain today after I went for a walk, but I haven't gone for a walk and he's got a sharp pain. I go, oh, I got a sharp pain. Okay, I have to be careful. You know, so it's just, you know, when I was saying to you, Antonia, about the levels of pain that I would experience where 10, 9 and 10 would be incapacitated in bed and not able to move. I've had days at 9 and 10, but my average lately would be between 6 and 8. Mm. And so yesterday was a 3. Wow. And that's stunning. And, and the day before was a 0. Tuesday was a zero and I I have not had a day of zero ever you know it's just unbelievable and I get so excited then but then I don't want to be hopeful oh I could live like this forever say no but even if I could just plateau out on something below a six would be great the language you're using too Abby I think is what also is helping you it's the that belief and the language you use is so reinforcing it's everything that we say to ourselves because every word is creating that experience so it's great that you're actually saying this live with people and the more you say it out loud and the more you say it to yourself I think the more it'll be that way well, I've written books about this this is how yeah. I speak all the time so yeah. yeah no I think it's really exciting but but I want to go back on this energy thing a little bit because one of the things that's fascinating is is that you you look at this music you're healing but you're regenerating to like we're going back to sort of a mean of where our body is at its optimal and we perform at an optimal and this energetic surge is also something we have to get used to because i think that is the optimal and normal but we've gone so far to the negative side of it that we don't know it and i think that's actually one of the really amazing um results of what you're doing on that mm-hmm. i mean it's really interesting one of the um, beta testers i'm going to be doing interviews with beta testers next week but just to give people a little preview um uh, one of them, um, she was perimenopausal and literally overnight, overnight, all of her symptoms dissipated and literally just went. All of her aching, all of her sort of ha- finding it hard to get out of bed, the bandwidth, and just she's got a whole list of symptoms that completely went overnight. Mm. So it's working. And I had someone else in chronic pain and their pain vastly reduced. So we're going to talk to all these people individually. But I want to get to, because what I want to do is Abby came up with something which I really like the sound of. And I'd like Honey to potentially go and tell us more about it, if that's okay with you. (laughs) That's what I'd like to do. So Abby, what did you what did you say the other day, which I was like, quite like you and you and your ego? You know, what's really interesting is, is, is I'm doing research at the moment on the Anunnaki and trying to figure out all the stories and all the things that happen. But what always fascinated me is that our bodies are like machines in one way. You know, we have the entire like reflexology binary. on our hands. I see zeros and ones. It is a binary coding on machines. I've always seen the zeros. Yeah, but it is like a machine. And we have the, the, you know, our whole body's on our hand, our whole body's on our ear, our whole body's on our feet, all the meridian lines. It, it, it's not an accident and to me it feels like there must have been a blueprint somewhere designed for how we're put together and that somebody would have been involved in that blueprint idea and so I have a sense that because of the way you think Antonia it's very possible that you have an inner knowing of the inner workings of the body where I feel and what's coming through the collective at the moment is that we have certain switches in our body that have been switched off deliberately to keep us lower in our energy it always reminds me of star wars where they put the restraining bolt on to the droids to stop them running away it's like we have restraining bolts put on us to stop Mm -hmm. us growing blossoming becoming bigger we have bombardment from other technologies frequencies coming down to us all the time 
I mean, even our equipment in our houses, our fridges um, emit frequency that is detrimental to, to who we are. And, and so to be able to get into the machine and to be able to fiddle a few switches and experiment, I think it's fabulous because even if there is an actual med bed with actual technology that you can sit into, how many people in the world are going to be able to do that when, you know, this is more accessible, this works on the belief system that you have with your body, like Lisa's believing that her finger is going to heal is really, I think, 80 to 90 percent of the fact that it can take and can go. The energy really, you couldn't do it without the energy, but if you didn't believe it wasn't going to happen, it wouldn't happen. So mm -hmm. I think that, 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 that Antonia has that thread in her of knowing how all of this stuff behind what we know, how it works. So anyway, so you you want honey to douse on that? You potentially said, no. You said it. You said it much more directly than that. That was a very indirect. You you said that I was potentially one of the original builders. Is what you said. One of the builders of the body, the blueprint builders. Yeah. Well, you were one of the alterers of the body. So well, you knew all okay. about the body, but you were one of the alterers. So you changed the body a bit. And this is kind of, you know, all of us have had these lifetimes where we've skated around um, and done things we thought were maybe good. So your intentions were good at the time, but then it morphed into something else, um, which it's almost like it was pulled out of your hands. So it's really important that we also go through the process of realizing that we agreed to do some of that stuff too. Like all of us have had these lifetimes where we skate, we skated in the gray and sometimes in the dark, right? Mm -hmm. um, so the Anunnaki did alter the body. But what did okay? Yeah. Let's just start. Let's start with the Anunnaki story, just so people are slightly aware of it. Do you want to go into a bit of that, yeah. honey, as well? I think so. Many ETs beautiful. interfered with Earth, right? Um, they came in. Earth was like a big experimentation place where they were experimenting on things. They were learning how to communicate with each other, and then they did something really unpleasant, which is basically they created the veil. So they created a veil, they got a group of beings together, which were humans, um, and they altered them so that they couldn't access who they really were. So your, I feel like you had something to do with a couple of the organs in the body. Ooh, which one? So you had a very good knowledge of the body itself, but some of the organs were created to actually make the body more complicated. Um, and what, one like of those the appendix system, yeah. So, so to make the yeah, but I feel like you actually had intimate knowledge of the um, what's the one that breaks the appendix? Yeah, burst. Uh, yeah, the burst. Yeah, so that was your baby. The appendix. See, the, the appendix is supposed to be a source of prana. That's what originally they, they said yeah. it was. That it was almost like a second stomach for um, energy, for life force. So you sort of absorb your life force from the food that you're eating and from the sun and from energy practices. And that was a storage of prana and that would keep you going for a lot longer. But that has been atrophied because it's only the size of a finger these days. It's like a, like a wiggly little finger thing. Um, yeah, so and, it was kind of taken away from you. Because that's supposed to, I think if that works, we can live hundreds of years, allegedly, or, or possibly a lot more. But mm -hmm. that life force is gone and that's completely atrophied. So you think that was the one, because I've, I've been obs moderately obsessed with the appendix for years. <laughs> yeah, it feels like that was the one. Um, and you had a lot to do with it, but then it was pulled away and it was turned into something else. So, you know, a lot of people have had these great intentions and they've discovered these amazing things. And then what happens? Somebody comes in and says, no, you can't do that. We don't want them to get it together, right? We don't want them to have free energy or whatever it is. You know, one, it's multitudes of things. But um, that is, I think you were involved in that. And I would say that was more around the Atlantis time. Mm. 
So do you think they were a slave race created by, well, humans were a slave race created by the Anunnaki to make gold, or is that a whole hullabaloo? No, I think original humans were already here, and I think they altered the human system to create a slave race. Yeah. Right. So is, will the no. um, will the appendix be useful again as an organ? It won't be needed. So I get the crystalline body. We're not going to need a lot of the systems that we are using now. That's interesting. Be yeah, I kind of feel into that too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because what I'm feeling as well is as we're going through this evolutionary stage, we're beginning to remember more and more who we are. And there are those of us who are, let's say, thought leaders, leaders in the healing area are probably the ones that created a lot of the damage and we're here to repair what we damaged because I know I went through a huge cycle of I killed a hundred thousand million people and if I'm powerful I'm going to do it again had to get over that had to become clear with that and say okay I know my light I know my dark and I choose not to kill people I choose to be powerful and do good with that and that was a lot of the growth through the spiritual awakening process that I experienced and I think a lot of us I can see it and a lot of my friends mm-hmm. as well, you, we wouldn't be this powerful if we didn't understand what power really was and to be yeah. able to use it now for, for good, for healing, for creation. It's just, it's a gift. Oh, and that's what we signed up for. So mm-hmm. I guess in another way, that's, that's why I'm happy to be a guinea pig for you, Antonio, because we have to, we have to try, we have to try these things, you know? Yeah, we have to push it forward. It's time to push it forward. And what I see about this healing is it's like manifestation. So if you think about it, you know, here's Lisa. She's like, I'm manifesting, manifesting that my finger is going to heal. She won't look at it. And Antonia comes in and she goes, I'm going to give you the spark of healing. And so she sends that spark and Lisa is nurturing it and babying it and, you know, I'm sure that Antonia sent it out more than one time, Yeah, but she's using that seed to do her own healing, but the power of two, just in any kind of manifestation is multitude stronger than the power of one. Hmm. So you've moved into this like co-creative thing Hmm. and that's how manifestation works in the whole universe. I think that's where we're going now. I've heard of power of eight groups being set up in Ireland. Yeah. That's something new to me where everybody shares the intention for one person and puts all of their power into that one. And then they do the next person and then they do the next person. And I think that that's how we come together as a, as a race to say, you know, we're going to rise above in groups. I yeah. really feel that's happening because before, I think we've had many years where we've all been on our own. And now we're all kind of coming together more now. And it's really exciting, really exciting. It is because we're so much more powerful. We're very powerful in our own right, but we're so much more powerful together. So as everybody gathers their own groups, it's just like, yeah. wow, you know. That makes so much anything. sense. I love, I love that. Yeah. You're absolutely right. This, and this, the, the attention on that. And we've all seen that through other groups where people have been ill and we've seen how we put the attention on others, but um, yeah, the rallying that everybody here did to support me and the finger thing. I know that that was, you know, was a big part of why it was healing. Absolutely. Yeah. And then also I have to go soon guys, but I just want to just say that you know, when somebody's like on social media and they say, I'm not feeling well, send me healing. And then everybody just sends healing. And, you know, the, this, the difference between a laser focused set intention between a small group of people and mass healing energy sent out just randomly out to the sky in case somebody wants it. There's huge difference between it. And I think that one of the things that I admire greatly about Antonia is how laser focused she is, how you know, you really know what it is you want and you focus on that and you go in there and you, you, you do it straight away. And I think if we, if we could all learn to work that way, then we get used to the idea that it is going to work and it'll be faster and it's done. And then we can go off and do something else and just allow it to unfold in its own time. And I think, you know, as part of our growth is, is to think of that. So, 
I don't know. <laughs> Does that oh, sound to you? Really, really <laughs> and it's also oh, it's just true. keeping oh. going. I like I have a laser focus, and I just a, a lot of. Um, I was talking to another healer friend uh, friend of mine the other day, and she says, "Why are you so much quicker than I am?" And I'm like, "Because you have amazing visuals, and you're going off on rabbit holes and having a little experience. I'm just like juggernaut, push, 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 because I'm that's my goal. And I and because I'm not that visually psychic, I think it means that I have more focused direction because I'm not seeing the whole story. But sometimes I can miss things in that way because it's a broader perspective with it with a single minded focus and goal." So it's a different way of working, but it is, I just keep going. I'm, I'm relentless. Yeah, that's really- <laughs> I'll say thank you to you guys and I'll talk to you again soon. Okay. Bye. Abby. Bye. Bye. Nice to have you here. Yeah. That's interesting too. I, I know you're right. You're tenacious about it. It's a really, really important point that nothing gets done without a real drive to get something done, but it's yeah. really interesting, you know, how, how you're visualizing it about, this energy thing and what honey, what you just said about it, the power of two is really important. So is there a way then to think about what Antonia is doing this energy thing and the power of two, um, how, how she can move that forward? I would, well, I mean, she always has a patient or a client that she's working with. So that's the other being, you know, that's the other person. Mm -hmm. Um, the way I see it is like, she's got the hot coal. So imagine caveman times, she's got the hot coal, right? And she's putting it into that little horn where the guy is like, yeah, I'm going to carry this to the next village. I've got the hot coal and we're going to make fire, right? And it's the person's job who is the client to protect the coal, to -hmm. keep the coal burning, to keep the fire going. You know, she's going to start it and it's your job to keep it lit. Mm, and mm. that's the power of two. And really that's because you're allowing it to stay lit. Mm. Because a lot of us, it's the programming that turns things off. You know, the be- I'll believe it when I see it. That's not you how know, beliefs work. You have to believe, I it, believe to see it. it. And then I will see it. You know, yeah. we have to... Yeah get into that mindset mm-hmm. to really, truly heal. Yeah. And that's what you did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it is belief, you though, fire and you kept it lit. Yeah. And it's like, and it's belief that impossible things are possible because mm-hmm. I don't have that, that limiting beliefs around things. I expect things, but I've, I have had innately within me for as long as I can remember the instant healing of all diseases is normal and natural. And I'm surprised that I can't do. I'm also surprised I can't fly, but I'm not going to be jumping. I'm with you on that. I believe I can fly too. I'm with you. (laughs) Let's make this all happen. You know, I'm surprised that I can't do it. So, you know, and it's really weird because my face, the face stuff is really interesting as well. Cause I am sort of waking up and my my lips are feeling like I'm going to blow up doll or something. They're like, (laughs) feeling like, (laughs) It's hilarious. Mm-hmm. And then I'm looking in the mirror, like, oh, my, my, my lines have gone just a bit. Like I had it this morning. I was like, oh, they've gone a little bit underneath my eye again. But it's sort of expecting these things to happen and holding that, you know, playing with it. So I think divine play is one of the most important things that we can do. And to expect the unexpected and to, you know, to play with these things. If you've got this, you know, this belief that it's not going to happen, that it's not going to work. If you believe you can, you believe you can't, you're right. Me, I'm like, oh, I wonder if it will work. Let's try this. And then things are happening. And it is really interesting to see my face changing because, you know, obviously Abby had chronic pain and Lisa's had this uh, damaged finger and I didn't re- really have anything physically wrong with me. So it's it sort of goes and works on the biggest priority. So yeah. my face, I, I prioritize. But there is another thing about bandwidth and energy levels and muscle I'm seeing if I can get into muscle strength because I that's one of my weaknesses because I spend a lot of time in a trance learning how to do all this stuff. My muscle strength has has deteriorated and I don't have the muscle strength that I used to have. I used to be very athletic. So it's just bringing that through. So I'm starting to do that. And I've just started a fitness program this week and I'm like started lifting weights for the first time in ages, like 
yesterday <laughs> and I did it again today and I must say my legs are sore but you know I've now got the bandwidth and the strength and the even resolve and and being able to just the very fact that I bought a set of weights and I've signed up to my friend's exercise program and I joined another gym which doesn't open another couple of weeks I've suddenly decided to do all these different exercise things because I've got the bandwidth to do it and it's not completely overwhelming and I'm actually able to do some of these things with weights that I haven't done in in quite a long time yeah. so that's starting to build back so you know which bit of the bodies it's it's like these little tubes it looks like some of them are higher and it's almost like I'm a mad scientist I've got yeah. these test tubes in front of me and it's like right which ones are low which ones are high which ones yeah. are, you know all these different levels and some of them are cracked as Abby was saying but it is I always wanted to be a mad scientist with hair growing out my ears it sounds like I may have been <laughs> I can skip that part of it <laughs> but I think this is really interesting about the um about the muscle mass it's one of the things I was looking at from a um, different point of view about m- clothing. So like when people have, um, they, they, they lose muscle mass when they're ill, they lose muscle mass as we age, so suppose of this aging process. So there must be something energetically to keep us. So the frequencies that you're looking at, the, the cellular voltage is related to that. So how do you get you back up to a good level? And then I was looking at also like this M sculpt concept putting into fiber. So almost like a lycra material which would then be put on patients or as or elderly so they don't lose it which which was the transition into increasing weight so i'm wondering if there's a frequency that you can hit which is also a voltage so there's a frequency part of it so i think it's a challenge on there because i think that is a really important point that you're talking about because so much of a result of inactivity that we've had results in this less muscle strength, which then results in an dis, in the imbalance in your body of how much your body is processing and how you handle weight. And that's why you gain weight. And I think this is really interesting, really interesting. I mean, honey, what, what do you get when I say those, those things? Yeah, so there's two things that happen when you age. And they've proven this with like, extreme athletes or Olympic winners, you know, gold medals and stuff like that. So Mm -hmm. basically what they're doing is they're sweating a lot and they're perspiring out their minerals. So they're losing their minerals and the minerals are like the tinder. Those are like the flint that you light the fire with. Okay. So if you lose your minerals, then you don't have the capacity to keep the energy going inside your system. And if you put the minerals back in and you have a spark, what are you going to get? You're going to get the muscles and you're going to have the energy to make them. Interesting. So I think it's two things combined Mm -hmm. that you need. Hmm. And you can deposit minerals energetically as well. But to be honest, the body is still physical. And 10% of healing is the body's choice. So just to go ahead and put those minerals in is like a really a no brainer, you know, to go ahead and take your full spectrum of minerals. And that's going to change your spark inside of you. And to do two of those things, you know, to, for Antonia to say, okay, I'm going to take the, I'm going to send you out these minerals, or she's going to say, go buy these minerals. And then I'm going to send you the spark, you know, what minerals do you recommend honey for people to go get? I really like burdock root. I don't yeah. have it. Cause it has, You've told me that before. I buy some. it has all the minerals that the human body needs. Okay. Yeah. So, and I don't (laughs) always take it all the time. I know um, it has been massive for the formation of the crystalline body, the minerals, and people have gotten all these symptoms because, you know, I have ascension symptoms and my higher self has kept saying to me, burdock root, burdock root, burdock root. It took me a month 
to dig through the cupboards and find it. Mm. But once I did, it took three days for me to feel better. And I had felt tired for months. Interesting. So it's really important to have that burdock root. And I still don't take it every day. But honestly, like I can regenerate so quickly and feel so much better immediately. And also making sure your soul is inside your body. There's another spark. Because here we are every night, like as a group and also as the light worker group that we're talking to, because nobody else, you know, would connect with that necessarily. Um, and saying to yourself in the morning, ooh, I feel terrible. And it's like, pull your, your soul back in, you know, hmm. bring that back in. And any extra energy you get from say Antonia or, you know, what Abby's doing or what I'm doing, it's just going to be like voltage. Yeah. Magnified. You know, so it's really good stuff. I think all of this stuff. And I think what you're doing with frequency is really cool, Antonia. So yeah. Me too. Keep it up. Keep it yeah. up. Let's, let's, keep, let's keep talking about that. I think that's the next kind of thing, but it's wonderful. But yeah, I second mm -hmm. to what Abby says. I thank you for that because it really is a spark. And, and I do share that always all the time about how I was so conscious not to look because I knew I was part of the creation. And thank you, honey, for confirming that because I do think that all of us need to learn to accept a gift too. Um, I yes. Guess. One of the things I still struggle with, how do you accept a gift? Or even a compliment, you know, it's sometimes a struggle yeah. to accept a compliment. Yeah. So yeah. let alone the gift of healing or like yeah. a brand yeah. new ruddy finger or whatever it is, that's much harder to accept than someone saying you're beautiful, which yeah. is sometimes uncomfortable for, for people, you know? Which is amazing. Yeah. So wonderful. This is a good start. Thank you, Antonia. Love it. Yeah, <laughs> Yay, thank you. Fantastic. And now I can clap my hands together without pain. <laughs> Yay. Cool. So yeah. I'm having an event where I'm going to be doing some healing, which is going to be on the 13th, but I'm going to be doing shame, regret. What am I doing? Um, shame, regret. I can't remember what I'm doing, but have a look. I will. It'll be in the link below. Um, where is it? Shame, regret, grief and guilt, you grief and guilt. So I'm going to be deleting all of that. That's going to be in the evening. And also I've got a new book, which is coming out on the 25th called Energy Secrets. So links below. So yay. Does anyone else want to say anything whilst we, before we finish up? No, just, I would just say, just allow the healing to come in, you know, find the healer, find um, the spark and allow it to happen. Lovely. And make sure say, you're not following just, Lisa and Honey that, and Abby that you do because they've all got great stuff coming up. Thank you. I just say believe. Thank you. That's what it is. Thank you very much. It was great to be here with you. Thank you, everybody. Ciao. Stop recording.